What is up? I'm Marcel and welcome back to The Modern Filmmaker. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build the perfect video editing PC for the modern day video editor. Perfect for under 5,000. Right. And right. it's not the perfect PC, but it is perfect for 8K. Yes, perfect for 8K. And we're not only going to show you why we picked the parts that we chose, but what you should look out for when building your perfect editing PC for the budget that you have. So most of our editing is done in either 4K timelines or even 8K timelines, but the footage we work on ranges from 6K all the way up to 12K with the Ursa Mini Pro. One of our fellow editors, Shane, works on an iMac Pro from 2017. And uh, our mission here is to build a PC that is not only perfect uh, to upgrade him to something where we can render and edit 8K, 12K, uh, but also something that looks good and is stylish, something that can run Windows 11, has DDR4 RAM, the newest processors, and... Dang, did I say looks good? One of the most important things about any PC build is, of course, the motherboard. You want to make sure that the motherboard is going to be compatible with all your other parts. For example, we have the i9-11900K CPU. So if we got the wrong motherboard that didn't have the right socket type, then that would be a big problem. And lastly, you want connectivity. You want enough ports uh, depending on what you need. For me, having a lot of USB ports is imperative. Having a fast Ethernet port is imperative. Having some kind of sound is imperative. Graphics aren't as important, but it's nice to know that we can output graphics from this motherboard if we need to. Yes. Step number one is to get the processor onto the motherboard. We chose the i9-11900K. The K version of all these processors, the Intel Core series, is the unlocked overclockable version. So uh, just in case we can squeeze a few extra gigahertz out of here, uh, we will be able to do that. Putting the CPU in is pretty easy, but it's a delicate situation. You definitely don't want to break it or bend any pins. They set it up to where it only goes in one way. You can read the writing uh, from top to bottom, and you can usually see how that goes in to the motherboard from top to bottom. We've got some beautiful DDR4 going in here. We chose this Elite by Team Group. This is honestly the cheapest RAM I could find that was still high performance RAM. This is 2666 uh, at DDR4. We got two sticks of 32 gigs each, which will make a total of 64 gigs in total. Now something to know about RAM is Joel was talking to me about this earlier. Instead of getting like four four gigabyte sticks, you get one 16 gigabyte stick so that you can double it. Instead exactly. Of, yeah. So now that we got two 32 gig sticks, we're only taking up two slots of RAM. And, and later. so later on, I can get two more 32 gig sticks oh, for yeah. Shane, and he'll be running 128 gigs out of this single motherboard. Now, it's another thing you need to look for with motherboards. You need to make sure that you're getting a motherboard that supports 128 gigs. In my computer, my computer only supports up to 64 gigs. So that's going to set you back. You're going to have to get a whole new back. motherboard and build a whole new PC next year, which is going to be awesome, by the way. Another reason I chose the team group, of course, is because of the matte black. If you haven't uh, kind of caught on yet just by looking at this motherboard, we've gone with a black and white theme. Uh, this matte black uh, RAM, is just it was too beautiful to pass up, especially for the price. The link for all of this stuff will be in the description down below if you want to check it out uh, and build a PC yourself. The RAM is simple. It's pretty easy. It only goes in one way. You just kind of want to, once again, do it delicately. We don't want to break anything or force anything. You just kind of hold it by the edges on the sides like that. You when know? it comes to the motherboard, uh, one thing to know is you'll want to install your RAM the furthest from the, the CPU. Pro tip number who knows how many in this video. Uh, and that's not the only thing you'll need to know. When installing two sticks of RAM, you'll want to separate the sticks uh, using the furthest slot from the CPU, and then using the second for the slot from the CPU. And as you can see, there's a notch in the RAM that lines up with a notch in the motherboard, and it's very simple uh, just to line that up. And you don't have to click these in, you just force the stick in. Delicately. Which will force the sides in. And there is a force, be delicate, be slow, but it does, you gotta mash it in there. So don't be afraid, but you don't wanna crack your RAM sticks either. Should we go ahead and put our M.2 drive in? 
I think so. For in point two, we've got the XPG GameX S70 Blade. A direct competitor for the Samsung 980. Very fast, I've got the same exact uh, in point two drive in my own workstation and I love it. Some hard drives claim a certain write and read speed and then you realize that the continuous write and read speed is not actually what it offered. But this one I can tell you will actually continuously write and read at the speeds it claims, which is the most important thing when you're editing video. Yeah, M.2 versus regular, it's just gonna be like two, three times as fast. Uh, there's, It's a no brainer. You're gonna want that M.2 drive and Gen 4 if you can get it. Not every motherboard will have this kind of shield. A lot of them, We'll have an M.2 drive exposed. The shield acts as the heat sink for the M.2 drive. Right. Which is nice because you get a lot of heat going through this much speed. So you want to make sure that you can disperse that heat out so you can keep those speeds going indefinitely. Especially when you're video editing because oh, yeah. it's like we're doing this for hours on end and without consistency we would be screwed. If we just lift this up you can see this is what Joel was talking about. This isn't just a plate up top. It's actually a whole heat sink. If you were to feel this it feels like a magnet. Because uh, it's a really, really cold. I'm not even sure what kind of metal this, this is. This actually has three M.2 drive slots. I didn't know that. Now, uh, there should be a screw on there. This rests on there, but usually there's another screw included. You probably got some extra screws in the box that you want to make sure you set aside before you start your build. Oh yeah, so many screws. Make sure you never throw away any of these little bags or anything with your motherboard because you're going to need all of it. And if you need a place to keep them, keep them in your box and put them in your closet. Yep. That's what I do. I've got about three motherboard boxes with all random kind of cablings just in case I need them. So what I like to do is I just very carefully kind of have my little angle. I think it's about a 25 degree angle or something, maybe a 30 degree angle. I just slide it in there and then you can simply push it down and screw it in. It's got a little nook right there that it goes in. We're just gonna be very, it's nice to have a second set of hands actually for this. <laughs> yeah. So invite a buddy over. That's perfect. And so there is adhesive on the back of this. We we'll need to take this adhesive off uh, and make sure that lines up well with the plate. So if we just pr kind of pretend, oh, set yeah. it down. So it's actually gonna be the blue one. I don't know why this one's different, but it looks cooler on this one for some reason, so. We're just gonna slide that off. There's nothing else we actually need to get to in this section right here. For now. Um, from what I guess, this is our ethernet uh, wireless card. Usually that's what they look like. And these are our PCI slots that we can put uh, any PCI devices. That's where we'll be plugging our RTX 3060 into. Oh yeah. This thing has been such a work of art. We scoured the internet for these parts, not only to work as well as they do, but to look as good as they're gonna look once they're all put together and still fit inside our budget, and still run 8K. Ooh, another cool thing about this motherboard I just noticed is it has an LED panel here, which gives you codes in case there is an error anywhere or something's not working correct. Another right. thing to look for. So should we get the case up here? Yeah. Yeah, we need to put it into the case. This is incredible. So last but not least, we have to talk about the video card that we threw in this thing. Because after all, it's the real star of the show in any video editing workstation. And we went with the RTX 3060. On paper, it's got great clock speeds and 12 gigs of video RAM, which is extremely important when you're dealing with 4K through 8K footage. Especially if you work in Fusion or After Effects and you work with composites or animation uh, or even advanced presets. Those things tend to be really RAM intensive and 12 gigs gives us quite a bit to work with. In tests from Puget Systems, this thing actually held its own against some pretty heavy hitters right now. For the last several days, we've been rendering an 8K 60p video uh, of just the snow. It's an eight hour long video. At this point, it's been rendering for 243 hours and we have nine and a half hours left. So this is like the ultimate sweat test. Can you do 8K 60p with an intense grade for 256 hours straight. And it has. Shane's even been able to come over and still work in Photoshop on the side while it's doing this in the background in Media Encoder. That is pretty amazing. So this thing is working its butt off, still usable, not even that loud. Can you guys even hear that? 
And for all you who may say, but Marcel, it's a PC. What about the Mac guys? I'm in the Mac ecosystem. I got to do the Mac thing. Let me just look up real fast what this would cost in a Mac. Overall, I could just not be happier with this build right now. It's got speed, endurance, it can multitask, and it's just beautiful. So if you want to build your next editing station, I've got links for all this gear down below if you want to check any of it out. And of course, give this video a like or a comment if you want me to do more builds on this channel. And of course, subscribe. As always, I'm Marcel, and this has been the Mark Maker. See you all next time. Peace.